JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for July the 16th. I am Harold Ambos Pissuros, head of research here at uh, JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion mo moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against uh, most of uh, the other major currencies on Thursday and during the Asian session uh, Friday. It underperformed only versus uh, NZD while it, it was found virtually unchanged against uh, GBP. The greenback gained the most versus CHF, AUD and CAT in that order. The strengthening of the US dollar and the weakening of the risk-linked Aussie and Looney suggests that uh, markets traded in a risk-off fashion yesterday and today in Asia. However, the strengthening of the Kiwi and the weakening of the franc point otherwise. Thus, in order to clear things up, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here, major EU indices were a sea of red, losing on average 1.16% each, with the negative sentiment rolling into the US session. Both the S&P 500 and Nasdaq slid, but the Dow gained uh, somewhat. During the Asian session today, appetite remains soft, with the only index recording some gains being uh, Hong Kong's Hang Seng. It seems that investors are uh, sticking to their guns that the Fed is, likely, is very likely to start normalizing its monetary policy sooner than previously thought, despite Fed Chair Powell reiterating yesterday, before the Senate Banking Committee, that something like that is still a ways off. Indeed, according to the Fed Fund Futures, investors uh, still believe that the Federal uh, Reserve will start lifting interest rates in, uh, in February 2023. As for our view, it remains the same as yesterday, with underlying inflation in the US surging to levels more than double than the Fed's objective of 2%, we are, we are reluctant to believe that the surge in consumer prices uh, is likely to prove to, to be temporary. Thus, we see the case for the US dollar to continue performing well against most of the other major currencies, while equities are likely to correct a bit lower. Now, flying, flying from the US to New Zealand, the Kiwi was found as the best performing major currency this morning, despite its overall relationship with uh, risk uh, sentiment. It seems that the correlation has uh, broken down due to expectations that the RBNZ may start raising interest rates faster than previously thought. At Wednesday's gathering, the bank appeared uh, more hawkish than anticipated, with officials announcing that they will end their uh, large-scale asset purchase program from uh, next week. What's uh, more, today during uh, the Asian trading data showed that the New Zealand's inflation surge and surpassed uh, the upper end of uh, the RBNZ's 1-3% to target range, specifically the year-over-year -year CPI rate rallied to 3.3% uh, 3 .3 from 1.5%. So this may have encouraged market participants to bring further forward their bets with regards to when uh, RBNZ policymakers may hit uh, the rate hike button. Actually, some, uh, some local banks believe that this could happen even at the next uh, gathering in August. Now, with that in mind, we maintain the view that the Kiwi is likely to continue performing well, uh, uh, performing well especially against uh, the Aussie. Because you remember that the RBA state dovish uh, last week announcing that it will proceed with uh, more bond purchases beyond September. Now, apart from New Zealand's CPI, we also had a Bank of Japan monetary policy decision uh, during the Asian session today, but once again, the event passed uh, unnoticed by, by end traders. 
the bank kept its uh, policy settings unchanged and noted that the risks uh, to the Japanese economic outlook remain skewed to the downside. They also added that although inflation is seen gradually accelerating, medium and long term inflation expectations are moving sideways. Now let's move on to the UK and the British pound. The pound was uh, uh, was uh, the other currency alongside uh, Kiwi against which uh, the greenback failed to to, uh, to 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 record any gains. That uh, may have been due to remarks by Bank of England MPC member Michael Sanders, who said that. Um, that economic activity has recovered a bit faster than uh, forecast in May and that it may become appropriate fairly soon to withdraw some stimulus. His comments come after both the headline and core UK CPI rates for June rose more than expected, something that may have prompted uh, some policymakers to change their minds uh, their mind with regards to, to the near-term future of monetary policy. So more Bank of England officials expressing a similar view to Sounders uh, could help uh, keep the pound supported, especially against the Australian and Canadian dollars. As we already noted, the Aussie may perform poorly due to a, due to a dovish RBA, while the Luni could also underperform after the Bank of Canada appeared less hoggish than anticipated. Now, as for the rest of uh, today's events, during the European session, Eurozone's final CPIs for June are, uh, are due to be released, but uh, as it is always the case, they are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates. Later in the day, we have the US retail sales for June, which are expected to have declined again, but at a slower pace than in May, as well as the, prelimi the preliminary University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index for July, which is forecast to have risen to 86.5 from 85.5. Now, despite expectations, o expectations over another pullback in retail sales, the fact that this may be slower, uh, this may be slower than previously, and uh, combined with an improvement in the University of Michigan index, uh, this may allow market participants to keep their bets over a, a hike in February and in February of 2023 well on the table. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the, in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT, just fair and direct.